In this video, we're going to review the equipartition of energy principle. Okay, in prior videos, we have introduced the first law of thermodynamics, which is simply a way to do the bookkeeping of energy in any particular system. Okay, so that uh, first law of thermodynamics is that the change in internal energy of a system is just the balance of the energy transfer as work and heat. Okay, so that's kind of the expression. Now, before we apply this first law to uh, a real physical system, uh, which will be uh, an ex the expansion of an ideal gas, uh, we actually have to talk about um, the energy of a gas. And that's what this equipartition of energy principle is going to allow us to do. Okay, so uh, the, the uh, essence of the equipartition of energy, equ equipartition of energy principle is that uh, when you think about a gas and think about all of the modes in which that gas can store energy, okay, we're going to see, or, or the, uh, the principle establishes that on average, each quadratic energy mode is going to have a contribution to the internal energy of the gas uh, of one half kVT. Okay, so let me uh, repeat that. Each quadratic energy mode is going to have a contribution to the internal energy of one half kVT. Okay, that one half kVT uh, is just the, uh, the product of the temperature by this Boltzmann constant, which is a known value. Okay, 1.38 10 to the minus 23 joules over Kelvin. Okay, so again, for uh, when you analyze that that gas uh, particle. Uh, you have to see all of the possible ways for that particle to carry energy and those uh, modes that are quadratic uh, then uh, will, uh, will have a contribution to the internal energy of one half kBT. So of course the question is well what energy modes are quadratic? Well for example translation. Okay, when you think about translational energy you say well the translational energy of uh, any given classical particle is one half n v squared, right? So notice that uh, there's a quadratic dependence of that kinetic energy and velocity, right? So what that would mean is that uh, for each one of these kinetic energy contributions, you will have a one half kVT contribution to the internal energy of that gas, right? So that's kind of the definition of a quadratic uh, energy mode. Okay, so then uh, the the remaining of this video, in the remaining of this video, we're going to see what types of energy modes. Uh, uh, you can have in particular gases. Okay, and the first method we're going to be talking about would be monoatomic ideal gases. Monoatomic. Okay, so these are the simpler ones. Uh, and it would be like uh, maybe argon or neon. Any rare gas would be a monoatomic ideal gas. Uh, that rare gas, that argon, uh, the only way that it can carry energy is through translation. Okay, but argon or any other uh, monoatomic uh, ideal gas is going to have three uh, degrees of freedom from translation, right? You can move forwards, backwards, up, down, uh, left, right, or x, y, c in a gen generic uh, uh, coordinate axis, right? So each one of those will be uh, uh, have one of these contributions, right? So the uh, Cartesian uh, velocity component uh, in the x-axis will be vx, and the kinetic energy in that mode will be vx, or uh, uh, one half mvx squared. So because there's three ways to translate, you can translate along three axes, okay, then you're gonna have uh, one half kVT contributions times three. Okay, so uh, in monoatomic, you only have translation, okay? And then uh, the contribution to translation is uh, three halves kVT, okay? So uh, for, this defines uh, the total uh, average internal energy of a monatomic ideal gas, since you only have three degrees of freedom translation, then your average kinetic energy, the energy is going to be three halves kVT. Notice that this equipartition of energy principle for a monatomic ideal gas is in beautiful agreement with the result that we obtain from kinetic theory of gases, which again all, uh, told us that the energy of a gas, which was simply kinetic energy, okay, for from kinetic theory of gases. Okay, that average kinetic energy was also 3 has kVT. That makes perfect sense because if the gas is ideal, then there's no interactions, and that means that there's no um, uh, potential energy, there's only kinetic energy, 
And again, uh, uh, then we have find that uh, all of the internal energy of the gas is just going to be kinetic, no potential. And again, uh, you can arrive at this from either the uh, equipartition of energy principle or from uh, kinetic theory of gases that has to be 3 halves kdt. Okay, now uh, we're going to now move beyond monatomic ideal gases to consider gases that will have internal structures. These are going to be molecular gases. Now, those uh, when you have a molecular gas like N2 or CO2 or sulfur hexafluoride, now you have more modes that can store energy. Those molecules now can rotate and they can also vibrate. Okay, so, so it turns out that there's also quadratic contributions from rotation and vibration and that means that you will have a different average uh, internal energy uh, for uh, those gases in addition to translation because those gases can also move. Okay, so let's uh, talk about rotations and, uh, and vibrations separately. Okay, so for rotations, so now we're uh, looking at molecular gases, not monoatomic. Uh, for rotations, uh, this is actually going to depend on whether you have uh, that these molecules are linear or nonlinear. Okay, because there's different ways to rotate for those molecules. Okay, so if you're linear, it turns out that you can only rotate uh, into axis, right? So, so think about uh, this molecule, you have an atom here and an atom there, and you can think about this rotation, right? That is the true rotation of the molecule. You can think about this rotation, right? But if you think about this rotation, that is actually not a true rotation because it's not changing the molecule at all. Okay, so there's actually only two ways to, uh, uh, to rotate for a linear uh, molecule. And that means that the average uh, uh, kinetic energy contribution or the average uh, internal energy contribution will be uh, 2 1 half kVT. So then you will have that that contribution from rotation will simply be uh, kVT. Okay, because there's only two ways to rotate, and both of those are quadratic, right? So notice that here you would actually have uh, a dependence of the kinetic energy on the angular velocity squared, so that will be a quadratic, and that is one half kVT, and then for the other rotation, that also ha will have a quadratic contribution on the angular velocity, so that is another one half kVT contribution to the average internal energy, so overall from on the two rotations, you get kVT. Now, if the molecule is not linear, then you're going to have three rotations. Okay, so then, uh, if this is not linear, the average uh, uh, internal energy from rotations will be 3 halves kVT. Okay, so uh, this would have to add to translation, and then the last uh, piece of the puzzle here would be vibrations. Okay, when you have molecules, now uh, think about a diatomic molecule, that molecule can also vibrate and that can also carry uh, uh, some contribution uh, to the internal energy. Now, vibrations are a little different in that now you're going to have two components. Right? In translations and rotations, you only have a kinetic energy component. Okay? There's, no, uh, uh, there's no potential energy component. However, for vibrations, you have a kinetic energy component right? so that uh, those atoms are moving and there will be a quadratic contribution to the energy. But there's also a potential energy component. You can actually imagine a vibration uh, as um, uh, an energy diagram for vib vibration in which we can plot here the potential energy E sub P as a function of the separation between the two atoms, right, when they do this. Uh, we tend to assume that uh, molecular vibrations can be well captured by something that we call a harmonic oscillator. Right, so this will be the distance at which the two atoms are uh, uh, in the lowest energy point, but if you uh, pull those atoms apart or push them inward beyond that uh, equilibrium point, then the energy actually increases quadratically, okay, according to Hooke's law. So the potential energy, again, it's just a, it's just a function, uh, it's going to be a constant, right, uh, r squared. Okay, so that is another quadratic contribution. So again, it turns out that for each vibration, you're going to have a contribution from uh, a kinetic energy because the atoms are moving, but then there's also going to be a contribution from potential energy uh, because again, those atoms are, are interacting with each other. Okay, so the idea here is that for vibrations, we have a kVT 
contribution per node. Right? So the last thing that we have to do here is just figure out how many modes, how many vibrational modes you have in a particular molecule. And this is also going to depend on whether the molecule is linear or nonlinear. Okay, so not linear. Uh, if the molecule is linear, you're going to have 3n minus 5 vibrations, where n is the number of atoms. Okay, so for example, for a diatomic molecule like nitrogen, N2, right, there's, uh, this N will be 2. That means that you'll have 3 by 2, 6 minus 5, just one way to vibrate. Okay, that's uh, what this equation tells you. And if the molecule is not linear, then the number of vibrations will be 3 and minus 6. And again, each one of these vibrations will contribute uh, with a factor of kVt to the average internal energy of the gas. Okay, so let's actually then try to condense all of this into kind of a, a single set of rules. Again, notice that uh, regardless of the gas, you're always going to have a translational energy component, even if the gas is monatomic. If the gas is molecular, then you will also have rotations and you will also have vibrations. Okay, so let's try to see if we can uh, kind of um, uh, uh, summarize all of, the, all of that knowledge here. All right, so here's going to be your table. If the gas is monoatomic, right, the only uh, uh, way to store energy is through translation, so your uh, average internal energy is always going to be equal to 3 halves kVt. All right, if uh, the gas is a molecular gas, so it's beyond monoatomic, has two or more atoms, then uh, it matters if this gas is linear or not linear. Okay, so we're going to say here, if the gas is molecular, but linear, so examples here would be maybe N2, uh, HCN, or CO2, okay, then uh, you're going to have uh, the contribution from three translations, then two rotations, and then 3N minus 5 uh, kVt from vibration. So your average internal energy will be 3 halves kVt plus kVt is 5 halves kVt coming from translation and rotation and to this you have to add the vibrations which will be 3 and minus 5 kVt. Okay and finally we just have uh, molecular nonlinear gases okay so molecular nonlinear And there are many examples here, of course, the rest, right? So you could have here water, or you could have sulfur hexafluoride, and almost any other gas that you can think about. Well, so then you will still have uh, your 3 half kVt from translation, but then you're going to have 3 half kVt from rotation, so all those turn out to be 3 kVt. And then you still have the vibrations, which will be 3 and minus 6 kVt. Okay, so those are all of the possible cases that you can have for uh, these gases. Now, there's something that is absolutely important about all of these equations. Notice that the uh, average internal energy of a gas only depends on temperature. It does not depend on the nature of the gas as long as these gases are, uh, uh, have ideal behavior. Okay, it turns out that then that's very important because what this would mean is that if you have an isothermal process in a gas, then the temperature will not change and what that means is that even if the gas is changing right, the average internal energy will not change either again if the process is isothermal. Uh, we're going to see that this has a very interesting uh, 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 implication when we uh, do when we, when we apply the first law of thermodynamics to uh, an ideal gas expansion. Now let me summarize this video. This video has introduced the concept of the equipartition of energy principle for an ideal gas. We have reviewed how different uh, energy modes like translation, rotation, and vibration contribute to the average kinetic energy of the gas, and we have set up a set of rules to be able to, be able to calculate the average internal energy for a monatomic, uh, molecular gas linear, or a molecular gas nonlinear.